prophecies Jesus fulfilled, number one. In Genesis, it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. This is a prophecy regarding the seed of a woman. Later in Matthew, it says, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged in marriage to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. And in Galatians, it says, but when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. So this prophecy that Moses wrote in Genesis was later fulfilled and written about both in Matthew and Galatians. And the gap between Genesis and Galatians is at least 1,459 years, and between Genesis and Matthew, at least 1,470 years. Number two. In Genesis, it says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This is a prophecy regarding the Messiah crushing the head or destroying Satan. Later in 1 John, it says, The one who practices sin is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the very start. This is why the Son of God was revealed, to destroy the works of the devil. And since Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and 1 John between AD 85 and 90, that's at least 1495 years between the two. And yet the prophecy is true. Number three. In Genesis it says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head, and he will strike his heel. The striking his heel part is a prophecy regarding the Messiah suffering while reconciling men to God. And in 1 Peter we see, For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. And this prophecy has a large time gap. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and 1 Peter between AD 62 and 64, so that's at least 1472 years. Number 4. In Genesis 12 it says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you, and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. In this prophecy, God is talking to Abraham, saying the seed of Abraham will bless all the nations. And we see in Galatians, the scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and foretold the gospel to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. And in Acts, it is you who are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And we see that there's a time gap here. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC and Acts between AD 63 and 70. So that's at least 1472 years. Number five. In Genesis, it says, Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I will give this land to your offspring. This promise made to Abraham's seed is a prophecy later fulfilled in Galatians. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many, but and to your seed, meaning one, who is Christ. And since Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Galatians was written in AD 49, that's a gap of at least 1459 years. Number six. In Genesis it says, Then Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine, since he was the priest of God most high. The Messiah is known as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And this prophecy is fulfilled in Hebrews. In Hebrews it says, Where Jesus our forerunner has entered on our behalf, he has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and since Hebrews was written in AD 70, we have a gap between that and Genesis of at least 1480 years. Number 7. In Genesis, it says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, since he was priest of God Most High. Since the Messiah is a priest after the order of Melchizedek, he's a king of peace and righteousness. And we see in Hebrews, and Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything first. His name means King of Righteousness. Then also, King of Salem means King of Peace. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and since Hebrews was written in AD 70, we have a gap of at least 1480 years between that and Genesis. Number 8. In Genesis it says, Then Melchizedek, King of Salem, brought out bread and wine, since he was priest of God Most High. And in Matthew we see, While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. 
And since Matthew was written between AD 60 and 65, and Genesis between 1450 and 1410 BC, this prophecy fulfillment gap is at least 1470 years. Number 9. In Genesis we see, But God replied, Your wife Sarah will indeed bear you a son, and you are to name him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. This is a prophecy regarding the seed of Isaac. And in Romans we see, Nor because they are Abraham's descendants are they all his children. On the contrary, through Isaac your offspring will be reckoned. This reckoning refers to the reckoning between God and his children, done through the crucifixion of Christ on the cross. Genesis was written before 1410 BC, and Romans was written in AD 57, so that's a gap of at least 1467 years. Number 10. In Genesis it says, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, and the two walked on together. This is a prophecy regarding the lamb of God being promised. And in John we see, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And since John was written between AD 85 and 90, and Genesis before 1410 BC, this prophecy fulfillment gap is at least 1495 years wide. Number 11. In Genesis it says, And through your offspring all nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is a prophecy regarding Isaac's seed, saying it will bless all the nations. And this is fulfilled in Galatians. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many, but and to your seed, meaning one, who is Christ. There's a time gap here between these two books. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Galatians was written in AD 49. That means this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1459 years later. To number 12. In Genesis it says, Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and to your descendants I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. Isaac's seed is promised as the seed of the Redeemer through the New Covenant. This is later fulfilled in Hebrews. Even though God had said to him, through Isaac your offspring will be reckoned. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Hebrews was written in AD 70. So this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1480 years later. Number 13. In Genesis it says, And Jacob had a dream about a ladder that rested on the earth with its top reaching up to heaven, and God's angels were going up and down the ladder. This is a reference to the bridge to heaven. Later, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I tell you, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This means the Son of Man is the bridge to heaven, and the Son of Man is Christ. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and John was written between AD 85 and 90, so this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1495 years later. Number 14. In Genesis it says, Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and east and north and south. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. This is a reference to the genealogy of the Messiah. Jesus' genealogy is described in Luke. The son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor. Jesus is shown as being from the line of Jacob. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Luke was written in AD 60. So this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1470 years later. Number 15. In Genesis it says, The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes and the allegiance of the nations is his. The scepter refers to the rule of the nations of Israel, and this passed around from tribe to tribe until it eventually came to Judah. The scepter passed to the tribe of Judah through David, since he was from that tribe, and it didn't leave until after Shiloh came. Shiloh is the Messiah. And we see later that Jesus' father was from the line of David. In the Gospel of Luke, So Joseph also went up from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, since he was from the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to him in marriage and was expecting a child. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Luke was written in AD 60, so this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1470 years later. Number 16. In Genesis it says, Enoch walked with God, and then he was no more, because God had taken him away. Some believe this to actually be a prophecy of the rapture of the church, but even still, if the rapture means the church is taken away to be with God, that could only happen if Jesus did it first. And in Mark, we see, 
After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Mark was written between AD 55 and 65. So this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1465 years later. Number 17. In Genesis it says, May God expand the territory of Japheth, may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. It's unclear if this verse is talking about God or Japheth dwelling in the tents of Shem, but we know that the Messiah was from the line of Shem. In Luke we see the very long genealogy of Christ, and all the way down at the bottom we see the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, and on and on until we get to God. So this can be taken as an example of a prophecy being fulfilled all the way back from Genesis. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Luke was written in AD 60, so this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1470 years later. Number 18. In Genesis it says, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes and the allegiance of the nations is his. This is a prophecy of the seed of Judah, son of Jacob. And in Luke, in Jesus' genealogy, it says, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah. This is another part of the prophecy regarding the lineage of the Messiah, fulfilled by Christ. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and Luke was written in AD 60. So this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1470 years later. Number 19. In Genesis it says, The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes and the allegiance of the nations is his. This is a prophecy regarding Shiloh, which means the Messiah, or one sent. And in John we see, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So Shiloh, the Messiah, is the one sent and the one sent is Jesus, so Jesus is the Messiah. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and John was written between AD 85 and 90, so this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1495 years later. Number 20. In Genesis it says, The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes and the allegiance of the nations is his. This is a prophecy regarding the Messiah, Shiloh, but it also shows that the Messiah will come before Judah loses its identity. And in John we see, If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. Caiaphas did not say that on his own. Instead, as high priest that year, he was prophesying that Jesus would die for the nation, and not only for the nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to gather them into one. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and John was written between AD 85 and 90, so this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1495 years later. Number 21. In Genesis it says, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes and the allegiance of the nations is his. This is a prophecy showing that the Messiah will have the allegiance of the nations of the world. And in John we see, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them in as well, and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. So Christ is talking about bringing both Jews and Gentiles, those that will listen to him, together in allegiance. Genesis was written between 1450 and 1410 BC, and John was written between AD 85 and 90. So this prophecy was fulfilled at least 1495 years later. 